Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're gonna do a Kiss comic, and it's Kiss Psycho Circus issue number three from Image Comics. Uh, I personally am not a Kiss fan when it comes to the music. I like what they're doing, but I was a pretty, I don't know, it's just, it never really speak to me, their music. But when it comes to their gimmick, right, this whole uh, makeup thing and there's their outfits and their shows, uh, I, I think it's great. I have a colleague, by the way, he's a big Kiss fan. He's going to every concert, every concert ever, uh, even though the, the lineup was pretty much the same, but he always goes so that it made me laugh and he talks about it with great passion about it. I like that. Uh, so yeah, I, I believe there's 31, 32 comics of uh, Kiss Psycho Circus and I got them all just because, I don't know, I like the concept and the art is pretty good. And, uh, and I think, you know, I just... You know, let's do a one shot, right? Uh, so, all right, it's been done by Brian Holkin, Angel Medina as the pencils, Kevin Conrad doing the inking and all that stuff. Now, Angel Medina, I was a big fan of his work when he worked for I don't know. Uh, he did a lot of Marvel work and all this stuff, and um, he has a great exaggerated um, way of drawing, and I like that very much. And every time. He draws comics. the The colors are also, I don't know. His 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 the his artwork really complements the colors and vice versa. If you know what I mean, if that makes any sense. Because every time he draws something, the color is just makes something really spectacular. All the all way. Although in this comic, the 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 colors are a little bit muted, but it's mostly because of the night, uh, because it's nighttime and all that stuff. And uh, so what is Kiss Psycho Circus? Well, it's not really about the Kiss members, although they are a big part of this comic, of course. But they are mostly representing hell and earth, good and bad. You know, they are the, the four beings. Uh, how do you say? The, the, the four who are one. Uh, you know, this is the demon represents fire. This is the star bearer represents water. You know, king of the beasts represents earth. And then we have the celestial scion of the cosmos, only his element is the air, uh, air. So, and they are, you know, how they are representing themselves in different forms, different ways, and they are helping or not helping. They are basically more, you know, um, abstract beings, you know, and then the other persons are the protagonist or the antagonist in this case. And uh, we're going to find out what's what's going on. So, all right, so we start here in Louisiana, and these guys are waiting for someone who's calling the Deuce. Now, the Deuce is someone famous, according to them, and um, it seems that they want to meet him because they want to be in the big leagues, if you know what I mean, right? And uh, so he says, well, the Deuce called him, and he says he needed a favor, right? So we help him out, help him lay low, and then what? Then he owes us. We get in tight with the big boys. No more small timing. And um, so, but he is a little bit late. Now, there's a reason for that because the deuce, he has car trouble. And he's swearing and he says, uh, well, it seems that he's the one that he checked the car. That's not how you say it, probably. He killed the one, he killed the guy that he just, you know, he stole the car from. And uh, so this guy is called Henry the Deuce Moncrete. Killer by both trade and inclination. It's late for a job. A couple of small time wasters called Nikki and Mickey. That's the other two. Two guys who wanted to be players and managed to overheal a little bit too much. Now they need to disappear. Not their fault, really. That's just how it goes. Easy kill. Poor Seps even agreed to meet him. Uh oh. So it's all a setup, right? So, and then he is, uh, you know, seeing a light and he goes there and all right, it's, it's a circus. Now look at this beautiful looking detailed art, right? And uh, but there's nobody there, but it's a lot of you know stuff in here. And um, and then we go to uh, what is it, Mickey and what's his name? Mickey and Nikki. <laughs> and he says, um, well, they they're getting approached by this this woman that works there says, hey, uh, it's, it's over time, you need to go. And he says, well, we, we need to let a bit, wait, let, let, wait a little bit more because we are waiting for someone, right? And um, so what's the story? Why the big rap? The deuce, he came out from New Orleans, Cajun duty, I think. A little dealing, a little stealing, more of a little killing. 
Let's say he has a certain enthusiasm for his work. Want some hit? No problem. He throw in the wife, kids, babysitter, goldfish for free. And uh, put a can in his hand and some poor suckers bawling his eye out, begging for mercy. Hell, he's like a kid at a freaking circus. All right. So, um, so he's walking around there and there's nobody there, but, you know, it's, he's seeing something, right? And uh, so it seems that the godfather of the Jews is some kind of a hoongan, of how do you call it, the voodoo man. And he talks about, you know, things in, uh, you know, of the loa, you know, the, the good and the thing, the good, bad, the good and the, and, the, and the bad things. I believe loa is, what is it, magic or something or some kind of a... Charm, I'm not sure. I believe Lo is something more like voodoo, I guess. And um, he says um, that the Jews never believed in that spirit nonsense. He's more like things that you can hold in your hands, like a piece of gun, right? Like a like a pistol, like steel or a blade. Um, but then something else is going to change and warping. Um, he says. And well, he looks at that and he's freaking out, right? And then he's having a flashback and it says, hey, you fat bastard, because this has happened in the past. And he says, um, leave me alone. What did I, what I ever did to you? More like we have done, more like what you've done, period. You pissed off the wrong people, Monty. Nothing personal. It's just the nature of the beast. And he just shoots him in the knees. Now settle back and relax. We're just getting started. So yeah, he's, uh, he's just an, uh, how you say, a sadistic piece of shit, right? And then, uh, but he freaks out about what's happening in the, uh, uh, on the circus. But more flashbacks because, well, he has scored to settles with this guy. And uh, this guy is looking for Susie Q, which is a cat. And he says, well, she whimpered like a bitch. Go figure, right? Now, Leo, you and me have a little business to take care of. But then we go back to the present again. So he freaks out and he's running and running, right? Henny Moncrete runs off into the night, the wind whispering through the tall grass, blood brushing in his ears. He imagines he hears the faint pounding of a distant drums. And then he looks up and he says, this can't be happening, shouting, because... The Lord of the Beasts is here. They stand still, the statues, four sentinels of the night, fierce with wild majesty, a dark envoy of the shadows, charged with a justice older than the oldest kingdoms of May. Wow, it looks great. So like I said, the, these celestial beings, these characters of Kiss, are um, now in, in, in animal form, but... In other comics, they are in demon form or celestial form or in human form, right? So they can change at will. But, you know, this is all metaphor, I guess. And uh, so he shoots, but nothing happens. Moncrease trembles at the gaze at the strange, unworldly creature, king of the beasts, lord of the hunt. For a brief, endless moment, he's frozen in time and then, run, he says. I also like the fact that his face is now changing more like a cat. And cat features. The coloring is really good, I think. Uh, so he runs, runs for his life. And so the hunt begins. Creatures of the night, they move with the grace of shadows, and all around the sound of drums grows louder. And uh, so the other ones, you know, Nikki and Mickey are just, you know, tired of waiting, right? And um, so, and they, they want, still want to meet them. So, hey, let's go check the highway. So they step into the car and, you know, they're driving, right? Um, well, Monty here, or the Deuce, is running for his life. Um, the chase goes on for a little, for a lifetime. It seems heart beating like thunder, breath coming ragged and strained never more than a few steps ahead of his pursuer. He doesn't dare look back. And then it's over. First, draw, first blood is drawn. The hunters circle their prey. Leave me alone. What I ever do to you? More like what you've done, period. Haha, <laughs> it's the same what he said to his victims. Man, what are you? What do you want? Look, this is all a mistake, some kind of a misunderstanding. Oh, Jesus Christ, you, you know, don't you? You know. And then, you know, the star bearer 
is hitting with his celestial light, I guess. Um, and then we see what happened in the past when he was younger. You know, savage life, cold and remorse, passion reserved only for cruelty. The strong terrorizing the weak, taking per perverse joy and pain of others. Henry Concrete has no answer. Plead for mercy, says the Beastmaster. Screw you, he says. And then he says, go to hell. Very well. And then something happens. And he says, no, wait, please. And he turns into an animal. He cries over for mercy, but speech eludes him now. Panic and terror drowns him out of his thoughts. Sensor sharpened, he hears the sound of claws clicking against the cold ground, the sound of fur stiffening on his sinew backs, the thundering of drums growing deafening. And he says it's too late. And then we see this, and his life is over. They strike as one, teeth ripping at flesh, razor claws striking to the bone. And the Beastmaster says, enough. And they just walk away into the night, never to be seen again. The sound of drums falls silent now. The winds die down and the grass grows still. Without a word, they head into the night, vanish like ghosts into the darkness. This is cool. So, and then Nicky and Mickey comes. <laughs> <laughs> Where you said what's going on. And they hear this dog. Just some old dog. Looks pretty messed up. What you doing all the way alone, huh? It's okay, bro. Boy, no one's going to hurt you. <laughs> he shoots him. <laughs> so, so one of the others says, Jeez, dude, what you did that for? Mud has three paws of the gr in, in the grave. Put him out of his misery. Ain't right to let this thing suffer like that. Yeah, I guess you're right. Of course I'm right. Only human thing to do. Let's go. I don't see nothing around here. Nothing at all. And that's the end of the book. <laughs> this is cool. Like I said, this, this is way different than, you know, the normal books that I'm reviewing. This is more, how do you say, um, karma and all that stuff. You know, things happening for reasons, but also no reasons at all. Right. And then we have some merchandise about the KISS members. And there's a, a lot of other stories like this. One shots and longer uh longer ones and uh yeah there's some couple of them and you know what i'm gonna you know i'm gonna review a couple of more um i mean it's been a long time it's, i believe it's fun the between the 90s and the mid 2000s that they did come out and um yeah i'm gonna review a couple of more guys let me want to know what you think about this leave a comment below see you next time bye bye